Good morning punters. So here I am in uh, in my dressing gown as you'd expect this early in the morning. Um, had a few requests for how to size a low loss header and how to size distribution headers and thought I'd go through those and uh, I have a few minutes spare before I rush off to work. So I thought I'd pop this together for you. So um, let's start. One second round. So basically there is a formula that we use which is 2000 times the square root of power over delta T times uh, specific heat capacity times target velocity times uh, 1000 times pi and that will give you the internal diameter of your pipe so okay now you need to add some brackets on there. if you're going to stick it in your calculator uh, you'll need some brackets to be added to that power obviously is in uh, kilowatts and it's kilowatts so we're using our specific heat capacity will be 4.2 Okay, and that will give you your internal diameter. So, if you were sizing a low loss header, so beautiful artwork there, we have a target velocity for a low loss header of 0.3 meters per second. So, our target velocity value in our formula here will be 0.3 meters per second. Now, um, I think on Kim Betty's course, he teaches 0.1 meters per second. And I think that was, I'm sure it was Kim Betty we did the research with actually, went through lots of different manufacturers, um, low loss headers, looked at the size of them and the recommended flow rates or power ratings that came on them. And we found a range of, of velocities between 0.1 and I think 0.5 or 0.6, something around there. I chose to use the 0.3, which was in the middle. And I think Kim Betty's chosen to go 0.1, which I think was the, the lowest velocity so um, either way they work and um, obviously some manufacturers have got a higher velocities and I'm sure they work. I'm sure those manufacturers haven't got it wrong. So you, could, you can kind of choose your own number. I'm going with 0.3 if you want to go with 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. I would be cautious going over this 0.3 to be honest. But what you'll find is the lower you go, the bigger the low loss header has to be. Um, now, most manufacturers will put a kilowatt rating on their low loss header. And unfortunately, it doesn't help us because we don't do things in kilowatts. We do it in a flow rate. So Wiesmann, who always do everything right, they manufacture, I think Q6 is the smallest one. I don't think there's a Q4. And a Q6 is six meters cubed per hour. OK, so you can work out the flow rate that's going to go through it. Anything up to six metres cubed per hour, you can use a Q6. And that happens to be around about 30 kilowatts at delta T5. So that would be a very, very huge underfloor heating system or a really large house with underfloor throughout. So it's possible to see that almost every system you would do as a domestic and large domestic property engineer, um, this is likely to be the only low loss header that you would ever need to buy. Coincidentally, if you buy this from B Trading, it's about the best price you'll find on a suitable less low loss header anywhere. I think the current price is around 150. At one point, it was down about 120. And most of those low loss headers are about 100 pounds more. So, um, do look up B, B Trading, be the smart plumber's merchant, have a look at their prices. They do really good prices there. They're very, very technically brilliant. They are an excellent place to get your Wiesmann equipment from. And um, Flamco stuff they do as well. They do the mixing groups um, from Flamco. The Flamco expansion vessels, I think the Flamco could be IMI actually. I think the Flamco expansion vessels are, are pretty good. I'm going to be buying more of those in the future. I'm fed up with those silly brackets on the on the normal vessels that tend to fall off the wall or you can't get the screws lined up. Um, anyway, right, sorry for my rant. So we have 
low loss header here. So if you were designing a low loss header to make it yourself from pipe, you would just simply use the formula and put in the 0.3 and it would tell you what diameter tubing to use. Um, just a quick one on low loss headers. I've done other videos on low loss headers. If you do a low loss header horizontal, you must feed it from the bottom. Don't feed it from the top. There's a, a video on my YouTube explaining why don't do that. Um, another little rule for low loss headers is a low loss header actually forms a mixer. It works the same way as a mixer, but it's not variable temperature. So it's quite useful to know. So, um, right, okay. So first part of it. Now, if we're gonna design a distribution header, excuse my camera work. We're gonna have a low loss header and I'm trying to draw looking through the camera here and it's not easy. So this is our distribution header and we're gonna come off here. So this first section of pipe here is going to carry the load of, let's stick in, we have three, three circuits on this. It's gonna carry the full load of all three circuits. And the velocity in the distribution header is 0.5 meters per second, okay? So again, in our formula, we're gonna put in the target velocity here of 0.5 meters per second. So the point of these low velocities is to create um, low deferential pressures when you've got a pump running off on this circuits here we don't want to see a pressure difference between these points or round through the other circuit so the idea is that the pump will apply a negative pressure on the inlet side of the pump and that that's going to draw from the easiest spot rather than trying to fight the other circuits it'll draw back round from its own circuit back round to here um, once we're into these pipes, these target velocity here is 0.9. So it looks very strange sometimes. You could put a 35 mil pipe in here because of the load of all three circuits. And then in theory, you'd be coming off in 22 here, and probably down to even 15 down here. I don't ever go into 15 because it looks strange. Um, but um, most of the valves I'm using are half inch because there actually is very low flow. And on the last one, this pipe diameter, if I sized it based on 0.9, would have been 12 millimeter with the half inch valve. Um, I can't remember the KVS, 0.63, I think it was. Um, KVS value is a tiny little slit in the, in the center of the valve. So basically we're looking for the velocity calculation to carry the flow in each section of pipe. And here it would be the flow of one, two, and three. And so up in the thing. So let's say, let's say for example, this was three kilowatts, three kilowatts, three kilowatts. We would be putting this one in the formula, nine kilowatts, target velocity of 0.5. And that would give us the required pipe size for this, this pipe. Now I've done a few now where I've needed 35 mil on this uh, first section of a distribution header. And the tappings on the Q6 from, from Wiesman are inch. So I did find that you can buy some inch to 35 mil male irons, but they're very difficult to get hold of. And it looks a bit strange if you don't use those fittings out the header. Um, but technically it's correct. However, this, this length of pipe is very, very short. And the shorter these are, the less influence the pipe size has over the pressure difference. So I don't know how important it is for me to get that 35 mil in there. Uh, I'm doing it because I can. But I think if you've done these before and you didn't know about this and you'd put 28 in here, I don't think it would be significant a significant impact on your system. Um, with a lot of these rules, you know, you see people doing these things, what we would call wrong, and still there's no impact on the system. system seems to be working perfectly well. So it might not be theoretically correct, but practically it's, it's it's working well enough so um it's good to follow the rules if you know what they are and just be aware that some of these rules are made up by us so we've just done the research in the past we've looked through lots of examples and we've had to draw some conclusions because there was no one there's no sort of official body telling us what we should be doing or shouldn't be doing so um, we've extrapolated it from examples that are commercially available or we've seen uh, working in real life um so yeah so i think that's covered everything so it's this formula 
So if you want to get a chance to take a screenshot there. So it's not proper unit. So we've got, let me just cross that power out. Okay, so we've got the ID equals 2000 times the square root of the kilowatt being carried in the circuit or the power carried in the circuit divided by your delta T uh, specific heat capacity target velocity 1000 and pi okay so specific heat capacity if you're in kilowatts 4.2 if you're going to do this in watts then your specific heat capacity will be in joules and not in kilojoules uh, target velocity is always in in meters per second um, the 1,000 and the 2,000 are just conversions to help us deal with the interaction between millimetres, metres. This answer is in millimetres, um, but we've got metres per second and velocity. Yeah, velocities in metres per second. Um, and we've got kilojoules and kilowatts. So these, these numbers are just doing the conversions necessary to give you the answer in millimetres. So, OK, well, I hope that helps.